Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, just spending my last days of summer vacation and getting ready to go back to college. I'm just going to take a PE class this fall, but I'm also taking my physical therapy every Thursday. Yeah, just so I can relieve my joint pain, you know, just getting a massage so I can feel better. Yeah, because I've been getting joint pain for, for a very long time. And on top of that, I, I want to continue losing weight, you know, going on the bike, and just you know, be able to move better so I can feel good. And I definitely need a nutritionist so that way I can lose a lot of weight and try to see if I can watch where I eat. I mean, I can't help it sometimes. I get really hungry. You know, I, I, I eat a lot of food these days, and this is what happens. Hey, we have to go with it there so far, <laughs> but let's just hope for the better. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to be doing a movie review this week, um, but as far as everything's concerned, I'm going to be very busy, so sometimes I won't be able to spend all week, you know, try to post as many videos as possible, but if it... But who knows, maybe I'll be able to post as much as I could, but I'm just trying to keep up with my laptop because I have a lot of video files and I definitely need to start saving them all so that way my computer doesn't crash and I hope it doesn't. So I, I hope I can find some more, um, maybe some more material to keep up with. So. Because I, I had this laptop for a long time, since 2012, and I just hope nothing goes wrong. So, so I want to be able to save all my files to a hard drive, a better hard drive, or maybe on all these DVDRs that I need to save up, because that's what I do when, whenever I, I keep up with these videos. So, we'll see. <laughs> well, anyway... Um, I am going to do a movie review this week, and it's going to be the equally awaited documentary that I finally saw. I've been waiting to see this movie for a while, called Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is based on the legendary popular children's television icon of public television, Fred Rogers which he hosted the TV show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, which lasted from 1968 all the way until 2001. Yeah. 32 years. That's how long it lasted. And boy, did it last that long. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, you know, that's sometimes, you know, with all the children's shows that we had from time to time, goodness knows how long it would last. Because nowadays, you know, we're living in, in an age where we're not getting that many Saturday morning cartoons and, and all of that stuff. I mean, we're just getting mostly educational children's shows. Although they did brought back um, some Saturday, Sunday, and, and weekday morning cartoons on by a children's blog called Kids Click, but that's only on on digital channels. So, yeah. And we do have a channel called Kibo, and all of that. While we're dealing with uh, you know, PC culture that's that's going on, well, yeah. well, that's also the thing too. Was that this show started, you know, during the Vietnam War? that was going around and, and they had to explain about what was happening throughout these topics of conflict and they actually brought it in into the show so, but anyway Mr. Rogers Neighborhood was a show about Fred Rogers you know who lives in the neighborhood of make-believe in his own house you know comes over you know talks about all of every topic you know, from time to time, you know, deal, trying to teach kids 
about the learning of the lesson of life. You know, like whenever it's life, death, you know, exercise, uh, you know, breathing, uh, as well as uh, political, as well as pol political culture, and, and all this other educational stuff that we hear. He was always there to to talk on on the screen to explain what all the feelings mean to children. Now, that's always the case. In every show, I mean, not only do you see, like, just for the start of, of the show, where, just for the start of the program, where you see all these beautiful models of the city, like you see all these buildings, and then you see a neighborhood trolley passing by that makes that uh, beautiful um, you know, beeping tune and that beautiful beeping sound, that dreamy uh, light tune that they they go into it, and this is where it's every time, just when they start the show, you go inside you know, Mr. Rogers' house, and this is where he sings the song. It's the beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day to be a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? And, and a after he, he deals with um, the topic of the show that's going around, you know, where we get to meet all the guest stars and they talk about all the feelings that's happening. You know, they al he also gives a brief tour. You know, I mean, even though he wears his coat and wears all these comfortable clothes and, and he's always very calm, gentle very nice it's like it's like having a neighbor next door <laughs> he also acts like you know he's he's a preacher like he always preaches and, and stuff just just not to talk down to kids too much but interestingly enough uh, he is a minister and I learned about that too that that he's a Christian minister he does all these ceremonies at church but when he discovered television, I mean, this is a new thing for him, even though he's not exactly a huge fan of television. I mean, he actually hated it, but he does it anyway, you know, just so he can talk about it. That way he can teach uh, all kids uh, a valuable lesson and everything that's happening. Uh, also, the fact that Every episode, they always uh, go for the the King Friday the Thirteenth uh, you know, stories, where they have um, a lot of characters like uh, not only King Friday the Thirteenth, who was voiced by none other than Fred Rogers. He also voiced other characters too, you know, like X the Owl, you know, Queen Queen Sarah Saturday. As well as uh, Daniel Striped Tiger, yeah. And then we got Harrietta, Harriet Elizabeth Cow, uh, Princess Margaret H. Lizard, uh, and we even got uh, human characters joining in, like, uh, for example, uh, Lady uh, Avalon. Oh, wow. <laughs> but then they also have other uh, characters like Mr. McFeely, you know, the the delivery man, uh, Officer Clemmings, as well as uh, Neighbor Aber, Emily the Poetry, the Poetry Lady, and, and several others. I mean, it was very popular. It was. It really uh, lasted this long. It actually started on on a channel called NDT before it became simply PBS in 1971. So as a kid, I remember watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on KCT, which comes on every morning 
or afternoon. Like it usually comes on like after Sesame Street. But also at the time I was watching other PBS shows like you know, The Puzzle Place, Shiny Time Station, you know, Square One Television. And and as years follow, you know, I watch shows like uh, Arthur, Magic School Bus, and all those other ones. <laughs> But hey, you know, we there have been a lot of educational shows that's on every network. That's always the case. Now I, I watched the show and I, I basically learned a lot of lessons uh, from Mr. Roger himself. Uh, from Mr. Rogers himself. I mean I, I really didn't I didn't understand the culture for that time. I mean I was only a baby, so, but I already began to learn about other stuff too. Like I, I started reading newspapers or you know, watching TV and doing all this other stuff too. But I also taken a lot of classes at school. You know, I, I was taught to read, even though I, I started learning to read at that age. Everything. And, but. I could definitely say Mr. Rogers was like a teacher. I mean, I, I definitely learned a lot of stuff from him, you know, where he tried to teach kids, you know, the valuable lessons of life. And I really learned about that. It's, it's, it's really hot. It's really something. And it's just sad that with all the things that's going on in, in today's culture, it's like, Sometimes I wish we had another Mr. Rogers. But, and there, there may be a lot of Mr. Rogers out there. I mean, who knows? And I know we have a TV show called Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, which is not the same compared to this show. But nevertheless, um, it still remains in our hearts, I mean, no matter what happens. Let's continue with the review because I'm taking too much of my time, so I'm sorry. Well, anyway, it stars Fred Rogers and archivable footages. Yeah, since he's no longer with us since his death in 2003 due to cancer. Uh, his wife, Joanne Rogers. Uh, Francis Clemens. Joe Negri. David Newell. And French uh, cellist Yojo Ma. And it's written and directed by Morgan Neville. The documentary begins when we meet a man named simply Fred Rogers, who is actually a pre bicentarian minister in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which that's where he's from. Yeah, he's a Christian. But he does a lot of ceremonies at church every day. And most of the time he also writes a lot of songs. Plays the piano and comes up with something that would that would actually help uh, others out there. Until he discovers a children's show on TV. You know, where it has a lot of puppets everywhere. And he thought to himself, well, even though he's not exactly a big fan of television himself, he actually decided to do a children's show on public television. And that's where Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was born. In February of 1968, when he had the first broadcast in black and white, and it was on a public television station called NET, yeah, National Educational Television, which would later become PBS, Public Broadcasting Service, 1971. And he spends decades in in 32 years being the longest running series, yeah, nominated for three Emmys actually win between several nominees and everything and 
he basically does what he does best. I mean, you see a bunch of models of of the city of make believe, and he's. You see the neighborhood trolley passing by, and this is where he enters his house. You know, while wearing a coat and just ready to take it off, put it inside the closet. And this is where he he sings the song. It's the beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day to be the neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? And so on. <laughs> and then he does a lot of topics mostly because he cares deeply about children and he want to be able to um, teach them the valuable lessons of life so every episode we see him talk about very very calmly very gentle very nice about um, the discovery of, of the way the world is even though things aren't exactly what it seems but Apparently that's what we're seeing in today's culture, or even in the past culture. Like for example, there was a Vietnam War that was going around, and this is where they had to teach them all these lessons about what was it like. Like, like for example, I know no one even, even for the all the political topics that's happening throughout the nation of America is where we start to see what was going on between the violence, the racism, the, you know, the gays, all of that that's going around spreading such as for example the assassination like when Daniel Tiger was trying to find out about what assassination means that's where you had to talk to uh, Lady uh, Aberlin about what it means, and that's what it meant killing someone for their power. But then it doesn't want to talk about it much. Or even the fact that we learned that Officer Clemens is gay, because he actually is a gay man, but then we begin to see all the rumors behind and Mr. Rogers himself, like if he is actually gay too, or or he he actually fought in the war, or anything else. But even for these rumors that was spreading around, deep down of it, he was just an ordinary guy, you know, just spending some time, you know, dealing with uh, being a minister or or just. You know, going around having this lifestyle by actually swimming, like a couple of laps at the swimming pool, even though they they suspected he had some tattoos somewhere on his body, or you know, he's going around spending time with his wife or or his kid, you know, at the beach, you know, going all the way on top of the the windmill and all of that, everything. <laughs> Just when they were getting a president, uh, Richard Nixon, uh, Fred Rogers was there, you know, trying to fight uh, the system with public television of uh, PBS. There was a moment where Fred Rogers was at Congress, you know, going to uh, Senator Pastore about about trying to find a way to save the network because you know they had to pay twenty million dollars. Uh, for funding and everything, and yes, <laughs> I I actually love that moment too because of course you can find that clip on YouTube where Pastore suddenly tells them that at the end of of Roger's speech that he just says he just earned your twenty million. <laughs> yeah, so he saved the show. He saved PBS and he saves everything, so he's like a hero right there. And anyway, there was also a moment uh, with Officer Clemens and Mr. Rogers where they, they were starting to get a, a foot bath, mostly because 
during that time, during racism that was going on in the country, uh, they started pouring all these bleach chemicals uh, inside their pools. So, like, whenever black people started swimming in swimming pools, uh, you know, white people just go around bringing some bleach and they start pouring them so they can get out of there. Yeah. It's very cruel. But. So it was very interesting too, and a very touching moment, and it really shows. Uh, there's even a moment that definitely made me cry. He sang the song to uh, to Fred, and and oh boy, this was like because they know that he begins to find out that yes, Mr. Rogers really loves him so much. He's, he really helped them out. He, he even discovered that even though his family didn't say any of this stuff to him, he actually did. Something he never thought he would hear. So he's almost like a father figure to him. And that was amazing. But anyway. Then we begin to see like other topics that was going around too, and then they show like a lot of clips from the show. Like they even show the the kid in the wheelchair named uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, Mr. Rogers, of course, <laughs> was actually talking to uh, Jeffrey about um, how he got into a wheelchair and. And mostly because you know his brain wasn't functioning, so he had tr he has like a a tumor, which it was it's hard for him to actually control his uh, his arms and his legs as well, so he can't walk very well. So I think he has cerebral palsy at some point. They also have um, a clip with. Um, Cellois uh, Yo-Yo Ma joining in. Um, in his own words, though, when when he actually discovered uh, Fred Rogers, I mean, he said to himself that he was terrified of him. So he, he was like, he was very afraid because of the way you know he looks, the way he acts, the way he appears. But and by the time he met him for the first time, he he, he still felt that way. But in the end, I mean, he still remembers, and and he really, and Fred really did help them out. It was cool. Um, also, I began to learn that uh, Fred Rogers himself um, had a fear of being angry, even though he loves to be happy and sometimes sad. You know, he has a lot of emotions going through. I mean, because he also had to deal with insecurity that's happening. But he always has a fear of, of being angry. So I know there was a moment where he was playing the piano and he was like banging. And you just see his expression that he made, like an angry expression. <laughs> so that was cool. And many others. Uh, there was... Of course, uh, they even show clips of um, other children's shows. I mean, they even show the clip of Transformers as well as uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and G.I. Joe and all this stuff, you know, as, as they get to the 80s. Uh, yeah, this is where they started to focus on the, the negativity of, of culture as we know it. But this was at the time when I was a baby. So I I started watching these shows and I love them, always have. But this is where we started to get into the process of TV violence, and this is where he did an episode where he's saying that if, if there's something scary that's on TV, shut it off. Yeah. Well, that's what's happening in today's culture with, which I know that's been going on for years. Even with all the wars that was happening at the time, because you know they had the Vietnam War in the 60s, 
and they had and all the other wars that was going around throughout the entire decades that's spreading around and of course 9-11 just when his show just ended I mean they just finished production on December of 2000 and by the time 9-11 happened this is where Fred Rogers himself decided to film some PSAs and just tiny segments and apparently he was already feeling devastated uh, doing this because he wasn't so sure he was he was you know he worked so hard for 32 years he wanted to retire and and this is where things were going like it seems so he wasn't so sure how how he wanted to react to it but nevertheless he he said what he can, and he did. But we also get to see a moment where he gets to meet Coco the Gorilla in 1997. Uh, and I love that moment too. Very beautiful moment where he gets to communicate with Coco. And I know Coco passed away recently. It was very sad. But Coco was there and and he was using sign language and actually hugging Fred and and <laughs> oh man it, it was just very beautiful just watching that all the way until the speech um, you know, during graduation at a university a very important speech And then we get into the negative side of, of today's generation, which apparently that's what's happening now, even in the early 2000s, where just when the show just ended at this point, or even before then, a lot of criticism that was going around that was happening, mostly from Fox News Channel, a lot of uh, bad publicity and, and all these... Uh, rumors and all these spreading around saying that you know, from everyone out there that Mr. Rogers was a fraud. Yeah. Which I know he wasn't. I mean, he was a good man. I mean, that's why people started to spread all, all these picket signs everywhere that was going on and they tried to make him look like a villain. Which, to me, that was just, in my opinion, totally bullshit. But, this is exactly what we're going on in today's generation, where you can't trust anyone anymore. And I hate that. But anyway, by the time he, uh, he finished the show, he had retired, and... And then suddenly we begin to find out that he was diagnosed with cancer. He didn't like going to doctors, I mean, as I learned about this. And so he's trying to find a way to actually uh, try to feel better until his death in 2003. And they had a memorial service later on, everything. Um, but it, it was a pretty well told uh, documentary coming from filmmaker uh, Morgan Novell. Uh, very well done, very touching, very sad, very entertaining. Uh, I also love the moments where they show the, the parodies of, of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, of course. You know, where you had uh, Eddie Murphy playing Mr. Robinson. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Because, interestingly enough, uh, Fred also uh, had a picture with Eddie Murphy. He, he got it. Uh, Fred Rogers actually got to be in interviews uh, with talk show hosts like like David Letterman and many others too. And of course, having to deal with all the rumors that had to be spread, like if if he was gay or or. 
or he actually fought in the war. I even love the parodies of of SCTV, you know, remember the <laughs> the battle of the PBS stars, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, he gets a fight with Julia Child on the rain, and you got uh, Mr. McFeely uh, as his uh, coach, and 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 also has uh, Keem Friday the 13, and Daniel Tiger, and everything. And of course, uh, you get all the characters. Uh, in the land of make believe, like I mean, besides King Friday the Thirteen, you got Daniel, you get Daniel Tiger, who's is the biggest part of them all because he's a sock puppet, but, <laughs> but he does do his voices very well, and it's hard to believe sometimes I can't even tell if that's either him. I mean, I could tell that it was his voice uh, coming from King Friday, but I never knew that was his voice of Daniel Tiger, the way I saw it. Um, I know I'm, I'm getting too ahead of myself, but it's a very good documentary. Well done, well made. Um, the only thing I could have wished they had more for the documentary was I wish they showed uh, Fred Rogers' speech when he was given his Lifetime Achievement Award back in 1997. Uh, I know you can find that clip on YouTube, but it would have been nice if they put that inside the movie. And I, I think they would have cut down a bit on the negative side that's happening between him. But I guess it's okay. Just I just didn't like that part where they had to go for that. Um, but I did love the the um, the animation of Daniel Tiger joining in, where you get to see his expressions and everything. But you can even tell that he's, he's always afraid. Yeah, he's always scared. Either way. <laughs> yeah, they, they actually shot the, the show. Originally, they shot it in mono. They had like um, a single camera, but then later they used multi cameras as it went along. And it winds up in stereo, as it turned out. And of course, the show has been funded by. The Sears Roebuck Foundation, uh, later the Corporation for Private Broadcasting, and all that. So, so they worked together because the show was actually done in Pittsburgh at WQED. I mean, the show was. Uh, also, uh, he even did the show in Canada too. Like it was on CBC. So he, so he was actually doing it in Canada before he winds up doing it uh, here in the U.S. So that's that's something. But no matter what, though, um, he had, he always loves to, uh, you know, help kids, you know, be able to learn something about the valuable lessons of life, as I mentioned. And every every week, you know, he just goes around, you know, playing all these characters in the land of make believe, you know, like King Friday the Thirteen and all the rest. And while the neighborhood trolley suddenly passes by, and I always loved that too, and everything. But he actually did work on another show, so he had to take a break from doing his series and and went up to do a TV show for adults. So. Fred Rogers just comes around, you know, you know, teaching all the adults about their lessons in life, but apparently that didn't last that long. So I, I discovered that. And so on and so forth, and everything that was going on. It, it was, it was really something. I also need to mention that every time at the end of the show, which sometimes kind of made me cry too, was when he's always singing, it's such a good feeling, you know you're alive, it's such a happy feeling, you're going inside and when you wake up, you might as well say, I make us snappy today, it's such a good 
feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that I'll be back when the day is new or when the week is new and I have more ideas for you. If you have things you want to talk about, I will too. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe I still remember that. <laughs> But there you go. Uh, I really miss him. But no matter what, we'll always remember Mr. Rogers as a kind, gentle neighbor that we never thought we would have. But he'll never be forgotten. So he's already up in heaven in the land of make-believe. So anyway, I give Won't You Be My Neighbor five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.